Look, a person put their hand inside a case full of mosquitoes, and the mosquitoes started sucking blood everywhere except in the circled area where they had applied a mosquito repellent. It's incredible, but excuse me, what product did they use? But does it really work that well? Yes, it really does work well, and in this video, we'll find out which product it was. Today, guys, we're going to talk about mosquito repellents for those pesky creatures. We'll find out if they work and how they work from a chemical physical perspective, including mosquito coils, sprays, liquid and tablet plug-in diffusers, citronella candles, UV lamps, and ultrasonic devices. Let's start by saying that the most effective and safest mosquito repellents are physical or chemical solutions. Physical methods include all measures that physically block mosquitoes. So that means mosquito screens, obviously, but also mosquito nets, appropriate clothing, and air curtains. What are air curtains? You know when you enter a place and often you find there's a fairly strong airflow right before the entrance? Well, those are air curtains, and they're used to physically prevent insects, including mosquitoes, from entering. Chemical repellents, on the other hand, contain chemical substances that irritate or disorient the mosquitoes and therefore prevent them from coming closer. And these substances can be dispersed into the environment or applied directly to the skin. Among these, we can find traditional sprays, roll-ons, and spreadable creams, and they all contain an active ingredient, in other words, a substance that acts against mosquitoes. There are four substances that work and that have been approved by the European Chemicals Agency. Now we'll look at them together and be ready to take a screenshot so you can remember them. One, we have diethyltoluamide, but on the ingredient list, you might also find different names, including DEET, N, N-diethyl-3-methylbenzamide, or N, n diethyl Two, Icaridin, also commonly called KBR3023 or picaridin. 3. Ethyl butyl acetylaminopropionate, also known as IR3535. 4. Paramethane 3, 8-diol, also commonly known as PMD. Those are the four substances that have been approved for topical use, so for use on the skin, that work best. But there are actually other products on the market as well, such as those containing eucalyptus or geraniol, which are less effective. And then there are also those based on citronella, lavender, and bergamot, which are even less effective. So if any of you have ever said, oh, but mosquito repellents don't work for me, I still get that you should ask yourself what substance was in the product you were using. Are you sure you used it correctly? Because how effective it is depends not only on the substance, but also on many other factors. And to achieve the best results, you need to follow the instructions on the package. For example, for adults, this spray recommends five squirts for each of your hands, seven for your face. Although they don't recommend you spray it directly into your face, but rather into your hands so you can then spread it. Five squirts on your neck, five on the top of each foot, and 12 for each calf. And then there are also instructions for children. So before saying, oh, but they never work, make sure you do the right thing and always read the label. Okay, before we look at if spatial repellents work and how they work, let's answer this question. Why do mosquitoes attack you everywhere except the spot where you've applied the product? Well, unfortunately, we don't yet fully understand how topical mosquito repellents work from a biochemical point of view, but there are a number of hypotheses. The first is that the substances do something akin to holding the mosquitoes' noses in that they block the pores on their antennae, and as a result, the mosquitoes are unable to perceive the odors we emit. Then, according to some sources, DEET, Icaridin, and IR3535 make the molecules present in our sweat less volatile, so they don't activate the olfactory receptors of mosquitoes. So basically, it's the opposite situation, meaning that they block our odors, and we no longer smell. A final hypothesis concerning DEET is basically that this substance acts at a synaptic level in the mosquito's nervous system, blocking certain signals and disorienting the insect. So, those are the main hypotheses. Anyway, we can basically say that they disorient or irritate the insects. This is more or less also the effect produced by the substances contained in mosquito coils and plug-in mosquito repellents, which are what we call spatial mosquito repellents. Inside the plug-in liquid diffusers, there is a solution that usually contains a dissolved pyrethroid. Pyrethroids are substances similar to pyrethrins, which are extracted directly from the pyrethrum plant. 
They can act on the nervous system and cause paralysis in insects. At low dosages, they are irritants and repel mosquitoes. There are a number of different pyrethroids, but from personal experience, I can confirm that those based on prolethrin, one of the many, work really well. You plug in the diffuser, and the mosquitoes don't enter the room. I've spent entire summers with all the windows open without being bothered by a single mosquito, prolethrin. Those that use tablets often make use of photolabel pyrethroids, which are pyrethroids that degrade more easily in the presence of light, and these substances are absorbed into tablets made of either cellulose or pressed sand. There's not much difference between the two products, the liquid or tablet plug-in diffusers, in the sense that they both release the substance into the environment and allow us to protect a medium-sized room of 20 square meters. However, it's important to note that the ones that use tablets provide protection for a shorter period of time. Let's move on to mosquito coils. Wait a moment, Dina. Could you tell us what product the guy at the start of the video used? Okay, you're right. I almost forgot. The substance was a spreadable cream containing diethyltoluamide, which is one of the substances we mentioned earlier that is approved by the European Chemicals Agency and is among the most effective on the market. Yes, it's widely available on the market, but in general, they all work well, whether it's a cream, a spray, or a roll-on. The important thing is, as always, to read the instructions and apply the product correctly. Okay, let's move on to mosquito coils. Here's one. They're spiral in shape and are often made from compressed sawdust and starch. That's the part that burns, to which green or blue dye is added. Although there are also those without dyes, like this one here, which is brown, along with a pyrethroid, such as bioalethrin or prolethrin and a fragrance. And do they work? Well, there are some mosquito coils that work really well and others that don't. To make the right choice, check that this symbol is on the packaging. It specifically says Presidio Medico Chirurgico. This means that the product contains an insecticidal substance that works and has been approved by the Ministry of Health as safe and effective. If it doesn't say this, like in this case, your protection is not guaranteed. In fact, here there's no Ministry of Health symbol, and it also says that it doesn't contain insecticides. The active ingredients are actually linalool and citril, which are basically lavender, bergamot, and citronella essential oils. These essential oils do not ensure an adequate level of protection. This one, which does have the symbol, contains prolethrin, which is a pyrethroid and acts as an insecticide. So, if we want a product that works, we should always read the label. It should be noted, however, that mosquito coils generally have a relatively limited range of action, an area of between 2 and 4 meters in diameter around the coil. And since they are used outdoors, the wind can carry away the pyrethroid, the active ingredient, thus reducing their effectiveness. All right, finally, let's move on to two methods related purely to physics, lamps and ultrasonic devices. Many insects are attracted to light. We all know that. Especially in the summer, if you just look at any street lamp, you'll see countless arthropods crashing into the light. You know what I'm talking about? They are all flying insects with positive phototaxis, meaning they are attracted to light, particularly type A ultraviolet rays with a wavelength of between 315 and 400 nanometers. Insecticidal lamps take advantage of this by attracting insects with type A ultraviolet light, and when the insects touch the electric grid inside the device, they are electrocuted and die. The disadvantage of these lamps is that they're not selective, and they not only kill mosquitoes, but also other insects, such as moths. Additionally, they actually kill the insects, while repellents generally just keep them away, so there's also an ethical aspect that could be taken into consideration, but I won't go into that. Ultrasonic sound waves, which are acoustic waves with a frequency higher than 20,000 Hz, are supposed to repel mosquitoes. In fact, if you search for mosquito repellent and ultrasound on YouTube, you'll find a number of videos that last about an hour with a black screen emitting ultrasound. Well, in reality, no ultrasonic devices actually appear to work. So I'd stay away from them, as they seem quite useless and could actually bother other animals, like dogs. Guys, there are so many other things to say. For example, did you know that sprays often work against ticks as well? It's written on the label in any case, so we should always read the label, and then we might also talk about the effects the products have on our health. In brief, they are all definitely safe if used correctly and according to the instructions, but some precautions must be taken with pregnant women and children. Thank you so much for making it this far, and as always, see you again soon, right here on Geopop Everyday Science. Until next time, we need to get rid of all these mosquitoes, right?
No, just kidding. 